Merci beaucoup. <laughs> All right. Uh, should I play more? The talk? How many guitar players here do we have here? Combien de guitaristes? The score from guitar. Huh? The score from guitar. So we yeah, so, players. yeah. No, just to be, uh, never know. Some bass players, drummer, everybody, huh? Yeah. So I need to play uh, all the notes. <laughs> yeah. All right, so. Let me play another one, then we talk about guitar and, and music. Okay. Sounds okay? All that?
I believe it's very important to understand what is being a musician and the possibilities, yeah. right? And briefly, I can describe um, some things that you, you, it's possible to do. Welcome. Bienvenue. Yeah. Bienvenue. Okay. Bonsoir. Ça va bien? Yeah, so like you can have a band, as you said, you, you know, you can have a band. So having a band, you can be a musician that plays for somebody else, yeah. a professional musician. So you're more like you're working for hire for somebody, or you can have a band. Having a band is, of course, takes more time, more money, and it's more difficult than just being prepared to, and work for somebody that has already a business going on, a tour going on, things like that. Um, of course, having a band has a bigger risk as well, because you never know, you can spend all your money, all your effort, everything, and then you just fight with the, the guy of the band, and then the band collapses, and then have to start. <laughs> so, as any as, uh, as any other business, you know, with a partnership, right? So it's good to know those things. So, work for hire, um, having your own band, and to perform live or to work in the studio. You also can have um, the profession of a being, being a composer, a writer, and develop those skills, and then have to have some studio skills as well. Um, music for movie, for video games, for any kind of uh, any kind of uh, uh, content, right on the internet nowadays. So it's a lot of a lot of work to this direction as well with Netflix and all those Amazon Primes and all those um, uh, videos and movies. So a lot of uh, sync opportunity when you sync video and music. Um, so there's that. Of course, if you have a band and can think about the merchandising, um, you also have all the industry, the instruments, the, the industry. So you can uh, do guitar clinics, you can uh, be a specialist in, in products, you can do YouTube videos explaining stuff, right? You can also be um, there's a profession that we can say is like a very good profession, which is being a, a social media person, you know, but like connected to music, like a YouTuber or something like that. Um, um, also, uh, in education is another way to go. So you can have your your courses, you can give lessons, um, you can have your YouTube channel or TikTok, whatever social media stuff, uh, and be being more like an educator. So. I think you have those those routes to go. So um, it's very important if you want to be a, a professional musician to understand the possibilities and see the one that you like the most, and then the ones that are more connected to you and to your skills. And because um, some people want to be a composer, some people want to play live, and then some people just want to play live no matter what. I like playing live. So you can play in small bars, you can you know, travel and carry your stuff because you want to play live. Some people don't like to play live. Some people get scared to have people, you know, so it might be like a studio, might be a, a, your thing. Or people like to teach. I like teaching, I always liked. So I keep, you know, I, sti I still do, you know, do things like this and teach online. So I, I, I like, uh, and I like performing, performing as well. Uh, and, we, and you can do everything that I said. You can, you can do everything. You can combine those things. Um, for me, in the beginning, but if, uh, it's such a long time ago, that doesn't really relate to the young uh, generation, um, I think. But back in the days, and also because I was uh, in, in Brazil, and the possibilities were not, we didn't have any references uh, as, as uh, creating a band and being international. This is like impossible. The possibility was to be very well prepared as a musician, so you could get a, a gig to play with the pop with an, a pop artist, and hopefully would good would be good pop music and not like a, a not so good pop music. Um, <laughs> and I and I did that like in very in the very beginning. I played with two artists. Uh, one was a boys band, you know, like those kind of guys dancing. Uh, it didn't last long, of course. Uh, it was very good for me that, okay, I don't want to be here, you know. But uh, it was very good because I was uh, very professional already. So I was playing for five, ten thousand 10,000 people when I was 18. So for me, it was like amazing. Because if it would, I would get a, a club to play, I would play for 15 people. So 
uh, was a, a very good experience. You played for the, the boy band? The boy band. The, yeah, the backing band. Yeah, the backing band. But the back. No, no, no. I was not. No, no, no. I was not the guy dancing. Yeah, no. Just to differentiate that. Uh, uh, sorry, I was the backing band, and all the guys from the band was like the metal guys, you know, uh, my friends, you know. So we had a we played together like more me rock metal, and then one of the boy dancing guys was into guitar, so he liked me. He wanted so there was a lot of guitar solos in there. It was kind of cool, actually, not a problem. But you know, anyways. Well, that was like a v in the very, very beginning. But then I decided to be in this group of people that we started a band called Angra. But it was a uh, um, yeah different gen different times, um, and then to under it's always un it's good to understand. Uh, I didn't have this um, this uh, way of thinking, okay. Um, back then, but it was a. Uh, early 90s, so early 90s was uh, kind of a very good time for record companies because of the the CD, you know, it was a big thing. So record companies were investing in new bands. Uh, you don't see that happening nowadays. Uh, but nowadays you have the internet, and the internet you don't need to, you don't need a person to choose you, to choose you. You're not, you know back in the days you need to have somebody from the record label. Ah, you're good. I give you some money to record. Now you can do it by yourself, you know. So I think that's a, a great thing to understand um, and use the internet the best way to get from level zero to a place. Being a, a content creator, being a musician, being a writer, being a talking about gear, whatever. That was a long answer, sorry. <laughs> of course. I think we're here for that, right? <laughs> I don't know if it's a signature thing from you. No, I'm not talking about the gear, but um, uh, it sounded to me like you have very cool broken phrasing sometimes. Uh, Is it good or bad? Verse. I like it's a broken it phrase. To me, it sounds like Brad Paisley made a love chat with Slash or something like that. Uh, so what? <laughs> slash what? It sounds like Brad Paisley, a little bit of country and very rock and roll at the same time. Huh. And, uh, Interesting because I never heard, I don't even I mean I don't know I know the name. Do you know what I'm talking about? The, I know the I know the name, but I don't know the music. <laughs> Brad pra no, no, Praisley, no. the country guy. The, 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 phrasing the broken mean, phrasing. Yeah. Okay. Is this some like? Do you understand what I mean by that? What I heard in your music that sounds maybe something like that. Yeah, that's great. Okay. I mean, uh, I mean, I, I mean, I mean that the way you hear what I play. I respect the way, you know, because that's the way you hear. Okay. Other people would be like, oh, he has a vibrato, or he has, you know, so great, you know. I see. I think I got it. Okay, so, um, yeah, the phrasing, that's. Um, let me think here how to answer that. So, and then let me get a, a clean tone here. Um, um, yeah, to make it surprising, <laughs> that's um, that's hard sometimes because um, what I play is not surprising for me, right? What I play is not surprising for me because that's what I play. It might be f for you, because it's the first time you listen to this. And then it's surprising, which is a good thing. So I take it as a compliment. But for me, I might think, oh, this is not so surprising. What can I do to make it uh, surprising for me? Right? Which is very t challenging. Um, I, I think about the... I, I will take these uh, broken phrases as the... Um, I don't know, because maybe because I come from Brazil... And I have this background of listening to Brazilian music a lot, I would say, you know. And then uh, um, thinking about the, so we have the metronome, right, like this. But then Brazil, I will think more like this, or like a, a more like a, a syncopation, 
how I feel the music. It's not like one, two, one, two. So that's how I feel. So I think it's about the, the overall feeling, the basis, you know, how you feel. The, the Cuban. So you feel like that. Or like the jazz musician will feel that swing, you know. And we feel like this, the music. I don't feel like swing. So I have a hard time to play jazz. I will never play jazz. Uh, I mean, like properly, because I don't, when I hear like, I don't feel like this. I feel, uh, would be more like, that's my 16th notes. So if I feel the music like this, probably when I play, I will go to those places somehow. You know. So I think it's always what is underneath the feeling. And then the same goes for tonalities. If you guys like chord progressions and stuff, we're in the school here. I see some jazz names and stuff. Like. So like the, you have the amazing chord progressions, but you have the tonality underneath. Sometimes the song can be interesting just because it's changing the keys in a different way, you know, so that's something that I like as well. So sometimes the phrases are the phrases are good because the harmony is good. And then the answer from for that question that I you guys didn't ask, but I said normally people ask about playing melodically, um, is a lot about harmony. So my answer to how can I play melodically is like, are you playing harmonically, you know? Because uh, I can give an example from, I, I can even describe, describe more of the song I played before. But you know, so uh, um, like that song that started like this, I don't know if you guys remember. Right, so like a Van Halen kind of a picking pattern, right? But I'm like, That's that's the way I hear the harmony. So, right, and then I can put some guitar taking. So I'm thinking the harmony, and then I have this groove, and then it gives me, that's why I like the hybrid picking, because it gives this, you know, give this. Percussive kind of. Yeah, so I remember like the first album I recorded with Angra we did in, uh, in Germany, in Hamburg with uh, uh, Charlie Bauerfeind, was a German producer. And it was pretty hard, because we have this like... Uh, and then we, just, we would play like... And then the guy's like, what, what's this? You know, this is metal. So, you know, so... <laughs> so we were like, oh, I don't know how to play straight. No, it's not straight. You're Brazilians. But, uh, Later, I thought that was a strength and not a weakness, you know, to use that in my favor, not like I need to play like the, the metal German, German metal, you know, kind of. So, yeah. Did I answer your question? You inspired me to go pick my guitar and try something. Oh, thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. So when, just yeah, yeah. When you use hybrid picking, you use those picking 
Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It comes from the... You. Maybe that's why you said about the country. Maybe because of that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. And then I was like playing like an acoustic guitar. So my, my tech, this technique comes more from the acoustic guitar. Uh, I have a broken nail, so it doesn't. song I wrote, uh, I was in Rio, so I was born in Rio, so that's um, a lot of uh, Brazilian uh, melodies in my head as well, you know, so that's a song I wrote for my second album. So it comes from this, I guess, but I'm not a classical player, classical player, but like the Megadeth song has, I, it's in the guitar, it's very hard to play. So having those you know, patterns, kind of a Villa Lobos uh, thing, you know. So it comes from there, and then I hold the pick and I use those two fingers. And then I can try to... Uh, you know, get a little bit more percussive. Then it sounds a bit country, I, I understand, yeah. Good. Yeah, I can play the, I will play the, one of the, for the Megadeth fans here, Slayer, um, and the, from the new album, um, We'll Be Back, it's like one of the songs that I wrote, the riffs, and uh, basically the, the um, I mean, I wrote some of the riffs of the song, not, not all of all of them. Um, the way the song is, starts is the way I, I will play, which is basically only riffs, and then the melodies and lyrics comes after that, you know. Hey. 
Merci beaucoup.